Hello and welcome. You're watching News Channel Nebraska. My name is Andrew Pfeiffer. Let's take a look at the latest Monday headlines. Lincoln Police said they arrested a 20 year old man on Saturday for the Russ's Market shooting. Javian Creighton was arrested for the fatal shooting of a 25 year old Lincoln man that occurred near South Coddington Avenue in West A Street. This event occurred on Friday around 10 p.m. LPD was sent to the area on report of gunshots and vehicles fleeing the scene. A 25 year old Lincoln man was located in the area suffering from a gunshot wound. He was transported to a local hospital where he died from his injuries. No other suspects are being sought. However, any witnesses or individuals with further information are encouraged to come forth. This investigation is ongoing. One person was taken to the hospital after a single car accident late Saturday. It happened on the Kennedy Freeway near Chandler Road just after 1130 p.m. According to officials, one person was taken to the hospital in critical condition. No further details have been released as to what caused the crash. This is a developing story. And as part of his plan to reduce local property taxes, a consultant hired by Governor Jim Pillen is projecting the state government could cut more than half a billion dollars in spending within a year. Utah-based Epiphany Associates identified four areas where changes would cut $531 million in state spending. Those areas include the Child Welfare and Medicare Medicaid divisions within the DHHS, the Lincoln Regional Center, and the Inmate Rehabilitation and Reentry Program with the Department of Corrections. Half of the projected savings would come from reducing fiscal reserves, eliminating unfilled staff positions, and tapping additional federal funds to cover expenses now handled with state tax funds. If you're looking for a fun summer activity in Lincoln, paddleboarding and kayaking is an easy option for spending the day on the lake. It's all thanks to the Lincoln Paddle Company, founded in 2021. They currently rent out paddle boards and kayaks from Thursday through Sunday at Lincoln area lakes such as Holmes Lake. Lincoln Paddle Company says their goal is to make local bodies of water more enjoyable for everyone in the community. Just our mission is to make it easy for anybody to enjoy a lake day around Lincoln. It's a good uh, uh, event for families. Uh, it's, it's pretty relaxing and you get to explore around the lake and say they're probably a 10 out of 10. They also hope host group rides, including ones at sunrise, sunset, and even under a full moon. That's pretty cool. And they'll even teach you how to do it yourself. Classes are available for anyone new to paddle boarding, as well as fishing kayaks. For any interested anglers, you can schedule a time for yourself on their website. John Deere is expected to soon lay off hundreds of employees across the U.S. The farm equipment company says it will let go about 600 employees across three U.S. factories by the end of August. The decision is Deere's latest in a string of production layoffs over the past year. It also comes as the company shifts production to a newly planned facility in Mexico. Deere has sought to reposition itself as a technology company amid falling agricultural revenue in the United States. Boeing is paying a fine to avoid prosecution, according to a Justice Department court filing. It says the aircraft maker has agreed to plead guilty to conspiracy to defraud the U.S. That charge stems back from 2018 and 2019 crashes in which 346 people had died. The document lists the fine is up to $487 million. That's a fraction of almost 25 billion victims' families want Boeing to pay. Boeing confirms reaching an agreement in principle, but did not give details. One of the biggest retailers in the country is no longer taking checks from customers. In what can be called a sign of the times, Target says its new policy goes into effect on July 15th. The company says few customers pay by check nowadays, and other forms of payment like credit and debit cards, digital wallet, and cash will still be accepted. This is not a surprising decision. The Federal Reserve has noticed a decrease in the use of personal checks written in the past few years. Around 12 billion checks were written in 2021, which is down from 20 billion in 2015. And in a tragic incident in Ukraine on Monday, at least 20 people had lost their lives and 50 others were injured. According to Interior Minister Ihor Klemenko, the violence struck during rush hour with missiles hitting various cities, including Okmaya Children's Hospital, which is the largest in Ukraine. 
Videos from the scene show volunteers alongside police and security services sifting through debris and billowing smoke. President Vladimir Zelensky acknowledged the devastating toll and praised the efforts of medical professionals and citizens aiding in the aftermath. And it's the most gynecologic cancer in the U.S. Despite advances in cancer research and treatments, death rates for uterine cancer continue to rise. Mandy Gaither has the signs to watch out for, and the fight one family is waging after losing a loved one. She was the most outgoing, caring person in the world. In September 2020, at the age of 63, Sherlyn Webb was diagnosed with uterine cancer, but was told the disease had been caught early. We thought that it wasn't going to be that bad. But during treatment, Webb's son says things went downhill. There were therapeutic complications. Less than a year later, Webb died. For us, it crushed us. Webb is not alone. Black women are more than twice as likely to die from uterine cancer compared to other racial groups, according to the National Cancer Institute. Researchers at the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center are trying to figure out why. Uterine cancer is the only cancer over the last four decades that has actually had decreasing survival rates. Dr. Casey Cosgrove and his team are hoping to develop targeted treatments to improve survival, but he says women should be aware of the signs, which can include abnormal uterine bleeding, pelvic pain or discomfort, vaginal discharge, changes in bladder or bowel habits, abdominal bloating or fullness, and a persistent cough. All these symptoms should prompt a talk with your doctor. So that if appropriate, some additional testing like ultrasound and or biopsies might be performed to make sure that there's not something that's going on. Webb's family is now working to make everyone aware of this disease and its disparities. There's no better way to honor her than to help others. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Fire and rescue crews in southeast Nebraska lifted a woman to safety after her car plunged from a pharmacy parking lot into a creek bed. Dan Swanson has more. Nebraska City Fire and Rescue rescued a trapped woman whose car plunged into a creek bed near South 11th Street Saturday. The Nebraska City woman was exiting the drive through lane at Cody's USAFE when the car accelerated, went through the fence, and dropped about eight feet from a retaining wall. The car went down a steep slope about 30 feet and dropped another six feet into the creek bed, coming to rest on the front bumper at a nearly 90 degree angle. We had to put a KED on her, which is kind of old school. We had to have it for handles because she was at such an angle. We couldn't get her out of the car. She was tucked right behind the wheel. We were able to get the driver's door open and get the KED on her, slid a backboard in and had to drag her out onto the backboard, up onto the car and then carried her out and we used the uh, line to help pull her up out of there and then stuck her on the ladder, slid her up out of there onto the gurney, into the squad, into the hospital. It's quite an ordeal. There was airbag deployment on the sides of the car, but not the front. EMTs were able to assure the trapped woman about her rescue and got positive vital signs before she was lifted to safety. From Nebraska City, I'm Dan Swanson, News Channel Nebraska. The American Red Cross is urgently seeking blood donors. The organization says it's seen a concerning trend around 20,000 fewer blood donations in just one month. NCN's Casey Wannenberg visited a blood drive in Valentine, which is making a significant impact. Shelly Witzke has made donating blood a priority for 15 years. Usually the Valentine woman makes her potentially life-saving donation during her lunch break. From the minute I walk in the door to the minute I'm gone is usually about an hour. But fewer people across America are rolling up their sleeves. In fact, earlier this year, the Red Cross declared an emergency blood shortage. The really scary thing is we can't manufacture blood. It has to come from somebody who's healthy to help a patient who is facing what could be the very worst day of their life. How's it going, Donna? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad. When Amanda Weenis started working for the Red Cross in 2012, eight out of every 100 people donated blood. Now it's down to three. We need as many healthy people as we can to come out and donate because 
you know, every two seconds somebody needs blood, but only three out of every 100 people actually donate blood. Wiener says this donation drive in Valentine is usually one of the most successful events in the state. Did you want to get scheduled for the July 11th drive? The Red Cross will host another drive here on July 11th. It's not actually painful. You and know. you can bet Whitsky will find that hour in her day to donate. Well, you know, you think you're scared of needles. I was scared of needles as a child, but it's very, very simple. A simple process that could save a life. In Valentine, Casey Wunnenberg, News Channel, Nebraska. You can stay up to date with the very latest by following us online. Just go to newschannelnebraska.com and click on the news tab. You can also follow us on X, Instagram, and like us on Facebook as well. Thanks for joining us. Have a happy Monday. I'm Andrew Pfeiffer.